one born you to telly here the mixology diva let me get this a uh, little bit better situated how are you tonight hey uh shout out goes out to my sister i got this little <laughs> rolling table so i wouldn't have to keep turning around every time um, while i was trying to show you guys how to do stuff okay i am still need to be a little more at an angle like that there we go so tonight's theme is after dinner drinks um and one of them is going to be an espresso martini lynn um so if any of you need to go make an espresso right now a couple of weeks ago i suggested you make a bottle of house infused vanilla vodka inexpensive bottle of vodka nice large vanilla bean he let it um, infuse for a couple weeks and it looks like that we're gonna make that we're going to make another drink called um, a safe harbor and another one and I probably should have told you to do this in advance but you can make it for another time I've got Irish whiskey and some dark roast coffee beans Honestly, it only takes a couple of days to get that infusion going. Okay, so why don't we make the espresso martini first? So we're gonna get our shaker, the Boston shaker. If you guys have your cobbler shaker at home, which many home bartenders have, that's fine too. We're going to get some ice going. And we're going to put in, I should be doing it over here, my new place. <laughs> okay, you know I love this little measuring cup instead of a jigger. So we're gonna do um, two ounces of the um, vanilla infused vodka. Okay, so an espresso martini, of course, would have some kind of coffee liqueur. Most of you probably have some Kahlua at home so let's do about an ounce and a half okay and i already made up my espresso so it, and it's still even a little warm but it's not roasting hot it'll be fine we have plenty of ice in that mixing glass now i also so an espresso martini every time i go out or any place i've ever worked at with i still have the price tag on my chocolate liqueur Hey, everybody always has their own recipe for an espresso martini. Um, I'm old school, espresso. I don't put Bailey's or any creamy liqueur. That's a cappuccino martini if you ask me. So any chocolate liqueur. So in this case, I'm gonna use Godiva, but I have also just used creme de coco, okay? This, um, either one, we're just gonna put in, eh, let's say about a half ounce. Okay, don't have my glasses on, so you could even go a little more with the chocolate liqueur. It depends on how sweet you like this drink. Now, what do we know about um, mixing drinks? If it has a mixer, and in this case, that would be an espresso, it gets shaken. So we're gonna use our Boston shaker, tap, shake, okay. Um, we're releasing, not in the wide gap, not with the no gap, where the medium gap, you're gonna tap it, look at that, it releases. It's about the right color. You're gonna get your Hawthorne uh, strainer if you're using a Boston shaker. And look at that. We're gonna put it in a classic uh, martini glass. And I should have already had this, but it'd be really fun to garnish it with three espresso beans. So here's our lovely drink. Try that. See, to me, that's the right amount of sweetness. I don't think you need more. Some of you might want to put in a little more of the chocolate liqueur to make it a little sweeter but I can really taste the espresso, which is, of course, what I like. So I'm gonna rinse 
my shaker, everything. And the next one, we're gonna make, why don't we make the safe harbor? Okay. Now, the safe harbor is brandy, you can use cognac. We'll do some port and some orange liqueur. So we've got a little bit of water in there. Let's go ahead and ice up our shaker. Okay, so now this is going to be, this could go in this size glass. You could double these proportions and put it in a snifter. It is a strained drink. So we've got brandy. Uh, I'm just using what I have on hand. You do not have to use cognac. I just happen to have this Hennessy. So it's a one to one ratio. Everything is gonna be a half. It's a half of the brandy. Any port will do. We got a half ounce of port. Now, you can use, look at my little nip. You can use Grand Marnier, but I want to turn you on to a dis little um, discovery. Grand Marnier is expensive, and um, sometimes there are alternatives which are just as good and a lot less expensive. For instance, in one of the drink recipes, we used um, St. Elder, which was a replacement for St. Germain, costing much less than the St. Germain, tastes the same, and the St. Elder is actually made locally. So I found this orange liqueur, Beauchamp, and it tastes almost exactly like Ramenier, and it was uh, $10 less. So we're gonna go, but if you have Grand Marnier at home, go ahead and use that. So, what do we know about um, creating drinks that have strictly booze in them with no mixer? What do we do instead of shaking? That's right, who said it? Stirring, okay. You just go ahead and stir till it gets chilled. This is a nice, drink. You could have this after dinner with coffee and espresso. You could have it with dessert or in lieu of dessert. So I went ahead and I'm just going to use this um, port cordial glass. I do have um, the other kind of strainer that actually um, strains drinks um, that are strictly booze. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour that in um, the pour glass. Oops. And this one would do nicely with a little bit of citrus oil. So I recommend getting a sharp vegetable peeler. Um, I also recommend using organic fruits and I'll tell you why. Um, pesticides get into the peel of the fruit, so. Um, I got a lot of this at Trader Joe's and it cost only a few pennies more, believe it or not, for the organic. So, once again, you're not gonna twist the white part, which is the pith, the bitter part. You're gonna do this part, you're gonna twist it, and you, if you even looked up closely, you would notice a little fine spray of citrus oil, in this case, lemon. All right, maybe, and I'm gonna taste this for you too. That's nice. Um, so drink number two. Great. All right, cleaning our, always cleaning our shaker between drinks. Good. We're gonna get this one, it's with the, uh, I used uh, Jameson's Irish Whiskey. I did this last night, about two ounces. If you think you're gonna have more, do more. Throw a handful. Drop an ice everywhere. So usually, um, we start out with the base liquor is two ounces. So here I have 
the dark rose coffee beans. Remember this little handy dandy strainer I recommend? Um, so we're gonna put this over our measuring cup just to keep the beans out. All right, I got two ounces. Now, this drink is customizable. What do I mean by that? What we're gonna do is we're gonna put the whiskey in there. And now we're gonna top it with a splash of your favorite liqueur. Okay. So, do you love Grand Marnier? Put a splash in. Do you love Frangelico? Put a splash in. You could even do a little bit of a Kahlua. Um, I even have this uh, nip of Amaretto, a little splash in. I, by the way, I, I rediscovered I am not an Amaretto fan, but it's here. So I'm going to do, in my case, it's probably a bar spoon quarter. So we're going to go ahead and stir that up. Okay. Now, what would be great for this drink because this is a sip and drink. We're gonna take our double old fashioned and we're gonna put a large rock in there, okay? So hold that thought and be right back. Okay, I recommend this um, ice cube tray to a lot of people. I don't know if you can see that. Six large cubes. It's silicone. It's great. Um, once again, why would you use this? Because you really, when you have the smaller cubes, especially if you're out at a bar or restaurant, they use the really small cubes. And what happens is the ice melts. So now you've got a diluted drink. Sometimes you want that, and then sometimes you don't. Okay, we stirred that up. And we're going to strain that. So I put the large rock in the double old fashioned. And we're going to go ahead. And I want to experiment because I didn't do this last night. That's good. I also, <laughs> what do you all know about me? I love bitters, bitters, bitters. So what we could do is put a drop of chocolate bitters in it. I know, I'm crazy, huh? Coffee beans and Irish whiskey. Um, let me grab another glass. Okay, so we're gonna try this out. Here I am, testing drinks on the spot with you guys as my witness. Another big rock into the glass. I left half of the drink behind. This is how I um, test and create drinks. I'll make a drink, pour half of it, and then the other half, I usually do something different, and then I compare the two. So now, we're putting in the chocolate bitters. Conceivably, I could have just wrecked this drink, but I doubt it. Um, I can't imagine putting bitters in a drink and having it not taste good. So it's chocolate bitters, by the way. I like it. <laughs> it's really good. All right, so both of these, let me review. Okay, we got our chocolate bitters. Measuring cup. So reviewing this one, what I did was I took some whiskey. In this case, I had some Jameson's. But about a half cup and I would say, I don't know, a dozen coffee beans. Um, I really like the taste of coffee. I did that last night, so it was perfectly infused or you could even maybe do it two nights. Handy little strainer. I strained it into the mixing glass over ice, about two ounces. And then I did maybe not even a half ounce of one of the following liqueurs. This orange liqueur, which is like Grand Marnier. Lua, Frangelico, 
Godiva, Amaretto, any of these would be good. But in my case, I also added a splash of chocolate bitters. I strained it. I put it over a nice large rock. And you could sit there in front of your fireplace. That's really good. Okay, so last week we talked about um, being um, prepping in advance some up for some drinks this winter. So uh, one of the things I was talking about was um, allspice drink. And you can go out and buy it. You can go buy Stoli Vanilla. Now listen, I drank a ton of Stoli in my life, not Stoli Vanilla, regular Stoli, and I do like Stoli. I happen to not be a fan of the infused um, vodkas, unless there's a couple of brands like Triple Eight, um, which is, by the way, local here in Massachusetts, and St. George. They both do a really good job, and um, those I would recommend. All the other ones, all the other, Absolute Stoli, Bacardi, all those in infused flavors are just um, made in a lab somewhere. So I'm gonna strongly recommend nice big gigantic vanilla bean and a bottle of vodka. Don't go and buy the most pricey vodka. So the allspice dram, I said, was a quarter cup of allspice berries. And if you remember, I crushed them up gently. Um, not all of them got crushed, but a number did in a glass jar in one cup of plain light rum. Remember last week we did all the rum drinks? So for four days, I let those infuse. Woo. And then after four days, I broke a cinnamon stick. I don't know if you can see that in there, but we've got our allspice berries and the cinnamon stick. So next week, what we're gonna do is we're going to make a brown sugar syrup. We're gonna strain out all the spices. We're gonna combine and we're gonna have allspice liqueur. Won't that be good? Now, that'll be really, really good. Um, let's say, you know what it would be really good with? Whiskey, scotch, something like that. Okay. So, I wish you guys would post comments. By the way, um, you can find this at any um, better kitchenware um, department in a store. I think it, they have it at Tags in Somerville. You, of course, get it on Amazon. Um, so getting this is, and just have it full and, and filled up and frozen. You can always, I mean, even if you just want to have your, you know, your favorite um, bourbon and just put it on one rock, highly recommend. Our espresso martini, we put this in a classic martini glass. I didn't make it super sweet. We did two ounces of the vanilla infused um, vodka, one ounce of a coffee liqueur, Kahlua, whatever you have. And I did about um, half ounce of chocolate liqueur. If you like your espresso martini a little sweeter, you can go up to three quarters of an ounce. I put in one whole espresso that was cooled. We shook it. We put it in a classic martini glass. If some of you like your espresso martinis creamy, you could add in, cut back on the chocolate liqueur, add in about half ounce, three quarters ounce of Bailey's. Mm -hmm. The Safe Harbor is a one to one to one ratio. It was a half ounce of brandy cognac, a, a half ounce of port, and a half ounce of orange liqueur, which could be Grand Meunier or this Beauchamp liqueur, much less expensive than the Grand Meunier. Could you put in Cointreau? You could, but there's something about Grand Meunier, for lack of a better description, it's not just an orange liqueur, it's got a cognac base. It almost is like a, burnt orange liqueur. I guess that's probably not doing it justice, but it has a much different flavor than uh, Cointreau. But if that's all you have, you can try it. 
Then we did um, a lemon twist. We put it in a port glass, but if you wanted to double up, you could do an ounce, ounce, ounce. So, or three quarters of an ounce, three quarters of an ounce, three quarters of an ounce. And then you would have two point, two and a quarter ounce drink and you can put it in a snifter. We did a lemon peel on this one. A little bit of citrus oil is a nice um, counterpoint to everything in here that's a little bit on the sweet side. But it's not super sweet. Not super sweet. And lastly, our espresso. Well, I didn't have espresso beans, but I have dark French roast beans. I put it in some Irish whiskey for about 24 to 48 hours. We put it in the mixing glass. Then we put in not even a half ounce, a little bit of any one of your favorite um, liqueurs. I went ahead because I'm a bitters nut and I put in a splash of uh, chocolate bitters. We stirred this drink. Why? Because it was all booze in the glass. When there's all booze, you stir. When there's a mixer, you shake. So just some things. I know when you go out to bars and restaurants, you don't see those techniques used um, necessarily. That's okay. Everybody has their own way. We talked about that in our episode on martinis. Um, everybody has their way that if they enjoy martinis. So when I was bartending, I always ask people, do you like it shaken or stirred? And even they weren't sure. I go, do you like the little slivers of ice floating on the top? And they'd be like, yeah, I love that. I'm like, you like it shaken, which is not the classic way to make a martini. It was really a drink that was meant to be stirred. Um, but Everybody's different, everyone has their preference. Um, so once you sort of get the feel and feel more comfortable making these drinks, certainly by all means customize them. It's just like if any of you are handy in the kitchen, learn the basics of cooking and then you don't have to be a slave to a recipe. You know, you find a recipe, whether it's a food recipe or a cocktail recipe and you know I can tweak that you know for instance when I make Manhattans or Negronis or Boulevardier I always put in um, the vast majority is the base liquor which is either the gin or the whiskey and much less of the Campari and the sweet vermouth but we all know I don't love um, really sweet drinks so um, I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you learned something. I know it's the holiday. I guess we're in the holiday season. I guess next week we'll start to break out the um, holiday drinks. There is a really fun, simple syrup I want to make with you. And then we'll do um, some really, um, some other fun drinks. Please comment and tell me what you like. If you have some, uh, crazy bottles of liquor in the back of your cabinet and you just don't uh, know what to do with them, give me a shout out, let me know. Maybe I'll come up with a drink or if you have any other um, questions, queries, um, posts. Thank you so many it have um, been generous and sent me gratuities um, with my Venmo account. Really, really appreciate it. It defers a little bit of the cost. Um, in case you're wondering, my username is at Maureen-Nuchitelli. Um, maybe one of my sisters will uh, spell my last name for those of you who might not know how to spell my last name. That's okay. <laughs> A lot of people do. Um, this has been really fun. I'm glad I got this little table. I hope you've been able to see a little better instead of me uh, turning around all the time. Just always reviewing all the proper tools, um, the proper techniques. Once again, uh, I really, I know a lot of people have a jigger in their home bar, but I really like, this is by, um, I don't ever know if it's OXO or OXO, this little measuring cup, and it's really, really easy to see um, your ounces. And I do recommend when you're just sort of trying to get your know your way around a bar and uh, cocktails and liquor first 
get some measurements down and then afterwards um, you can sort of free pour. You'll, you'll start to get the hang of it, what an ounce feels like, what two ounces. I, of course, recommended right from the beginning getting these pour caps because you can control how much you pour. And when you see um, bartenders, you know, professionals, um, we will tip it absolutely, well, kind of knew that was going to happen, straight up, it flows out, and we know how to count and measure out ounces, but when you're still trying to know your way around a bar, <laughs> you want to maybe still use the measuring cup. Um, I think that's it. Do you guys have any uh, thoughts or anything? I'm glad we got the espresso martini created and done. Um, I think Lynn will be really happy. Uh, I think that's one of her favorite um, beverages. It's my favorite one to make for her. <laughs> um, thank you, as always. Uh, thank you for when you share this, and I hope you have uh, fun watching as much as I do putting it together. And I'm always looking for inspiration for new drinks. I try to keep it sort of in a theme, keep it seasonally appropriate, continue to review correct barware, correct techniques, but certainly uh, comment and let me know. I'm Maureen, the mixology diva. You know, thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, of course, I have to move my little table aside. Um, I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.